Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Deep Industries Earnings Conference Call hosted by Go India Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Surbhi Sutaria from Go India Advisors. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Deep Industries Earnings Call to discuss the Q4 and FY22 results. We have on the call Mr. Paras Salna, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Rohan Shah, Director of Finance and Group CFO, and Mr. B. Ravi, Strategic Advisor. We must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward-looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. May I now request Mr. Parasavla to take us through the company's business outlook and financial highlights, subsequent to which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Surbhi. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to you on Deep Industries Q4 and FY22 earnings conference call. I trust you had the opportunity to run through the earning presentation which was shared earlier. Just to give you a brief introduction about our company, we are one of the largest sourced natural gas compression providers in India. We have presence in niche segments like gas compression, gas dehydration, work over and drilling rigs, and integrated, integrated project management services. I am happy to announce that after a challenging three-year period, we are back on a strong growth track. Deep Industries have clogged highest ever consolidated revenues in FY22 of rupees 326 crore, a growth of 63%. We also witness inflationary pressures on our input cost and cost of operations putting some pressures on margin front as well. Despite the near-term challenges this presents, we are seeing the benefits of our actions to maximize our profitability, cash flows and returns to our shareholders. We have a robust and growing order book. The order value of our recent awards is around rupees 154 crores and the total order book stands at around 632 crores which will be executed in next 18 to 24 months. This provides us the decent visibility over next two years. I am happy to announce that Deep Industries is now an approved vendor with Kuwait Oil Company. Very few Indian companies have been able to pass all the eligibility criteria and we are one of them. This opens doors of opportunities for us to expand our rig services internationally on a larger scale. With our existing technical capabilities, we can expand our onshore rig business manifold overseas and this could be a key revenue driver for deep going forward. In our continuous efforts to de-risk our business model and diversify the revenue segments, deep industries have bid for the assets of Dolphin Offshore and Enterprises. Dolphin Offshore has been a leader in providing services to offshore oil and gas industry. Acquisition of these assets is a natural extension of the business. While the company at its peak achieved a revenue of rupees 400 crore with an EBITDA margin of around 30%, the company faced existential crisis on account of poor capital management. Along with all the technical capabilities, we will now experience workforce. Currently, we have received letter of intent by COC and it is in NCL approval stage. This can take anywhere between six to nine months. We see good growth opportunities in the offshore business as well. We are excited to work with the team to restore the company back to its original level and chart out ex exciting future growth path. We are continuously executing our goal to strengthen our balance sheet. I am happy to report that we are currently a zero net debt company. We have strong free cash flows and for FY22, it stands there to be INR 70 crore. We are committed to creating super superior shareholder value and happy to announce that board has approved a final dividend of rupees 1.85 per share, taking total dividend for FY22 at rupees 3.25 per share. This is in line with our board approved dividend policy of 15% on standalone spec. With that, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Rohan Shah, our CFO and Director of Finance to take you through 
क्वार्टर फोर एंड एफ आई ट्वेंटी टू नंबर थैंक यू थैंक यू गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई विल जस्ट गो थ्रू द फाइनेंशियल परफॉर्मेंस इन ब्रीफ स्टैंड लोन रेवेन्यूज फॉर क्यू फोर एंड एफ आई ट्वेंटी टू वेर एट रुपीज सेवेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट थर्टी सिक्स करोर एंड रुपीज टू सेवेंटी वन पॉइंट फिफ्टी सेवन करोर ग्रोइंग बाय फोर्टी एट परसेंट एंड फिफ्टी टू परसेंट ऑन वायो वाई बेजिस रिस्पेक्टिवली दिस वॉज पर्टिकुलरली लेड बाय बेटर यूटिलाइजेशन लेवल्स एंड ओवरऑल ऑपरेशनल परफॉर्मेंस कॉन्सोलिडेटेड रेवेन्यू फॉर क्यू फोर एंड एफ वाई ट्वेंटी टू वेर एट रुपीज एटी फोर करोर्स एंड रुपीज थ्री ट्वेंटी टू करोर्स ग्रोइंग थर्टी नाइन परसेंट एंड सिक्सटी सिक्स परसेंट ऑन वायो वाई बेजिस स्टैंडर्ड ऑन एबिटा फॉर द क्वार्टर स्टूड एट रुपीज थर्टी पॉइंट सेवन थ्री करोर्स विद मार्जिन अराउंड थर्टी नाइन परसेंट फॉर फुल ईयर एबिटा इज एट रुपीज हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन करोर्स विथ मार्जिन ऑफ अराउंड फोर्टी वन परसेंट ड्यूरिंग द ईयर वी विटनेस सम इन्फ्लेशनरी प्रेशर ऑन ओवरऑल इनपुट कॉस्ट ऑन कॉन्सोडेट बेजिस एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट ऑन कॉन्सोडेट बेजिस एबिटा हैड सम प्रेशर आर रोबोस कॉस्ट मैनेजमेंट प्रैक्टिस हेल्प दस एट द एंड ऑफ ईयर विद एबिटा मार्जिन ऑफ मोर देन फोर्टी परसेंट वी रिमेन विजिलेंट ऑन कॉस्ट फ्रंट गोइंग फर्दर Q4 standalone pet uh, remains at rupees 17.7 crores with pet margin of 22.40 percent, and full year standalone pet at rupees 69.34 crore with pet margin of 24.6 percent. Q4 consolidated pet at rupees 17.18 crore with pet margin of 20 percent, and full year consolidated pet at rupees 72.40 crore. With pet margin of 22.19 percent, deleveraging continues to be our key priority, and we have reduced our long-term debt uh, from 223 crores in FY17 to 17 crores in FY22. With good liquidity on balance sheet, we are now zero debt on net debt basis. Our debt to EBITDA ratio continues to be one of the best in the industry at less than 0.05. We have been able to strengthen our balance sheet and achieve this uh, negligible debt status by strategically focusing in projects which have quick payback period and are high cash generating. For FY22 period, our operating cash flow to EBITDA was 61%. With this, I would like to now open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. <coughs> Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Mr. Ashwin Agarwal from Akash Ganga Investments. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. I have three questions. Uh, first is, sir, can you please give the segmental breakup of your order book and also with ONGC? Mr. Ashwin Agarwal, can you hear us? Hello. <coughs> Hello. 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 Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, uh, sir, I have three questions. Uh, first is, uh, sir, can you please give the segmental breakup of your order book and also with ONGC? Uh, the second question is, with now being an approved vendor with KOC, what kind of revenue potential do we have? 
will we have to do any additional capex and how much would that be and the third question is can you please provide an outlook on cng booster compression unit in terms of opportunity competitive landscape and potential for next 2 to 3 years sure so uh, on our overall order book basis almost uh, 30 to 33% uh, would be contributing from uh, compression and dehydration business around 35 to 37% is contributing from uh, rig services business and around 20% uh, is contributing uh, from uh, integrated project management and few uh, some other projects put together with regards to KOC, uh, yes, uh, we are uh, looking forward to it. Uh, they have exceptional rates uh, when it comes to uh, the rig services business. And uh, they have some CAPEX requirement as well. So uh, we are, as of now, evaluating the opportunities and uh, trying to bid for uh, rigs as many as we can. So uh, going forward, once we have some uh, form numbers, we'll be able to uh, confirm on the CAPEX, uh, which we'll be aiming for that uh, KOC uh, tender, because uh, we have not yet finalized how many rigs we are going to bid uh, for that KOC tender. And with regards to uh, CNG booster compressors, there has been an increasing demand in the CNG business with the kind of the GAs and the licenses that have been given away. There is a reasonable amount of demand coming in for uh, all the areas, all the states across the country. Uh, it won't be possible for us to put that in quantum in numbers because these are certain data we get, uh, we keep getting these uh, as and when. So we don't have a consolidated data of what the demand could be. But uh, with the kind of uh, orders or kind of inquiries that we have, we have a reasonable idea on what the possible demand could be. Um, uh, we currently are uh, executing the orders from is called AGNP. We have an orders for around 100 compressors from that side. We have got few orders coming in from IOC, IOEGL, and side likewise. So, and there are few tenders that we have already submitted. But it seems these numbers and these requirements should go up uh, significantly and uh, it looks very, very promising as we go forward. Sir, lastly, Ashwin Agarwal here, if you can also talk about the potential of the ONGC tender in the gas dehydration business because we recently, Vedanta had also floated a tender. So what are the opportunities in that segment? See, as I had mentioned uh, some time back, dehydration services are very, very essential. It is uh, practically impossible for any producer to inject the gas into the pipeline unless it has been dehydrated. The tender that was coming up by Vedanta, um, so that's, that was for probably one field, but probably we see that as we go forward, these requirements would keep on increasing from almost all their fields. It is only about the time how long it is going to take and uh, we have uh, submitted our bids in all these tenders. We largely have our interest on the rental fleets. Uh, we normally don't bid for the projects where we don't bid for the projects where um, it is in uh, supply contracts. So we have a, uh, we are clearly focused on providing services on the charter hiring basis. So there you, you would have seen certain tenders that would have come up uh, uh, on the requirement side. But uh, what, uh, but it won't be, uh, you, you need to classify whether they are on a charter hiring on or on the supply basis. Sir, overall, how do you look for growth in terms of next two years? What can be the revenue growth and margins because of this commodity price inflation which we are seeing all across industries? So can you add some flavor what kind of direction we can expect? Um, now what I can say at this junction is largely going to be a guesstimate, but with the sentiments and with the kind of orders that are being processed or the inquiries that we are getting, uh, they are quite big. 
uh, day in day out we keep getting lots of inquiries now how would that be getting converted into a order book or the kind of uh, the growth but being on a very conservative side we expect that we should grow uh, around 15% year on year uh, that is uh, when i say this this is a conservative number the numbers could uh, go even up or maybe much more uh, but to put that in an exact, uh, exact uh, numbers would be difficult and margin wise will we be able to what should we expect see as we had mentioned that there have been some pressures on the input cost because of the ongoing inflation so uh, we feel that more or less we should be in the similar ranges but the some percentages maybe should go up or down but we are not really sure of the, the uh, you know the numbers what kind of it would be but they would be nearly you know practically on the similar lines to what our current uh, uh, you know margins are so around 40 is percentage we can expect so yeah between 38 to 40 percent is something that we expect okay 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 thank you that is helpful all the best sir thank you thank you participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Sudhir Pera from Right Time Consultancy Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, Paras Bhai, and many congratulations for great sets of numbers. Uh, congrats to you and uh, your team as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, my questions are like uh, you have mentioned in the investor presentation that uh, almost your work weeks are working at 100% capacity and best compressors are working at 85% capacity. So I would like to know, sir, from where uh, growth will come by? Uh, because are you going to do uh, more capex looking at the tailwind uh, sector is uh, witnessing? So how do you see uh, going ahead uh, next financial year, or current financial year? Yeah, so we see, uh, as when I said that there are a lot of opportunities coming up, it would imply that there would be a new capex that could come up. And the project that we are trying to look at is on the level of trying to be a little low on capex and more on the services side. So our focus has always now been uh, to reduce or to uh, have the minimal uh, capital requirement for growth. But having said that, uh, we are bidding for both the contracts which uh, do have a sizable capex and there are certain projects which are uh, low at capex but the growth definitely has to come in with the infusion of new capex and that is how we'll be able to achieve new revenues okay so for kind of growth which you are witnessing you will have to uh, do more capex so what i understand is it right or, the, or you can see value growth also in terms of whatever of uh, tailwind the sector is facing and uh, kind of inquiries you are getting so there would be revenue growth in terms of uh, as we mentioned that there could be an inflationary pressures on the input cost but at the same time uh, certain services would also be hired at a little higher rates so that would also add to the revenue growth and uh, uh, we would try to use uh, the internal accruals as much as we can and only the balance portion would be used for raising funds so uh, largely our internal funds would be uh, used to fund the capex and uh, sir we have been able to reduce our debtors significantly so are we planning to reduce it further going forward so we can have less pressure on the working capital side so we are practically a zero uh, net debt so on the data side, uh, the, as we had mentioned, uh, there are certain projects when they are at the initial level. So the first billing cycle normally takes an abnormal time. Like the data day, normally we work from 60 to 90 days is a normal data day. But when there are new projects that are coming up, that puts the pressure on getting the first cycle cleared out. So in, we have witnessed that those pressures or those timelines goes as uh, high from seven months to uh, eight, nine months. So, so keeping that data is something. So once they are, once their invoicing are getting cleared, from there we have a routine cycle which is between 60 to 90 days. So we see maybe in next couple of months, probably in next quarter, you would see that the data have reduced drastically. Right. So, and so my last question would be like, 
uh, when do you expect uh, dolphin revenue to kick in uh, approximately if everything goes well on as per plan? See, as, um, as mentioned, it is going to take at least nine months for the NCLT orders to come in. Suppose that we have a lot of, we have a, um, we have a big journey to, you know, revive this company. Uh, to expect the revenues in this financial year, we think it is next to impossible. But maybe we can see some flavor of it, assuming everything goes well, maybe from the middle of the next year. Great, great. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Jayakant Tasturi from way to Wealth Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I just have had three questions. Uh, first one is, sir, uh, I can see your investments amount have gone up close to about 3.5 to 4x. Uh, can you throw some light on it? And, uh, sir, particularly you uh, spoke about CAPEX. So what kind of an amount do you expect for this current uh, financial year? Uh, and you said you would be primarily doing it, if I'm not wrong, by uh, via internal accruals. And uh, what kind of future orders are you expecting for this current financial year? So if you can give some guidance on that. Thank you. Yes, so uh, as I said, uh, we have a good amount of liquidity available in balance sheet, uh, which is uh, invested in some uh, liquid investments, and uh, we'll be using those uh, free cash in uh, doing capex further. With regards to uh, idea on capex, uh, since we are in a business where we do capex only on getting firm order, and that too if required, uh, if it is not. Uh, been done through internal or available fleet, then only we go for uh, new equipment and it, which it entails into capex. So amount, I cannot uh, give you a broad idea, but yes, uh, we'll be doing some capex uh, in this year. Okay, and sir, about the future orders, what do you expect uh, for this financial year? So uh, we are witnessing very good uh, inflow on uh, tenders and inquiries uh, recently. So uh, we are quite uh, bullish on getting new awards uh, in coming two, three months. So we believe it would be a good time for us. Uh, sir, any particular with regards to the what kind of uh, amount of uh, the orders worth would be? Uh, so I, I, it won't be proper for us to put the uh, you know numbers in, uh, but just as a point of estimate, maybe in a year or so we can expect an order over 500 crore. Or so. Okay, okay, so, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of. Niharika Jain from Equitas Investment Consultancy. Please go ahead. Ms. Niharika, can you hear us? Hello. Yes. You Am may I audible? Your question. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, regarding this operating margin fall of 680 BPS, can you just give us a clarity on which component has impacted the most in your proper uh, direct expenses side? See, in uh, EBITDA, uh, we had uh, seen pressure on consolidated basis. So, uh, on standalone basis, we are uh, still good, uh, above 40%. Uh, but yes, uh, fuel price increases has impacted us uh, because in our uh, rig services, uh, major operating cost is fuel. And uh, to certain extent, extent uh, spares cost has also impacted us. Uh, as a follow-up question, so this fuel is not uh, charged on a uh, like actual basis to the client because our tender is generally like for uh, three years or so, like the contracts with the client. So this fuel is not charged to them on an actual basis. Uh, in some contracts, yes, uh, but not in all contracts. In some contracts, we get some range of fuel that if uh, fuel ranges in between this price, then it is on you. If it is crosses some uh, de defined uh, ranges, then client may reimburse to certain extent. 
but it's mix and match of all uh, different uh, contracts put together so in not in all contracts it is charged on actual basis to client uh, okay and going forward seeing the volatility of uh, the energy prices and fuel and everything so how how are we hedging ourselves uh, are we putting an escalation clause or regarding this fuel how are we going about it so with the new contracts that we bid we definitely keep in mind the ongoing fuel prices and we bid our uh, you know our bid our, we submit our bids accordingly so they are already factored for the new bids but for the ongoing we have to take the heat of whatever the pressures that come up on the fuel uh, escalation okay okay all right got it and on this ipm side integrated project management so in the last con call you had said that we would be qualified to provide all the services using in house expertise after we complete our first contract so what is the status of it and do we have an order book regarding ipm so uh, yes our first contract uh, which was supposed to uh, complete in june uh, which is now extended up to december uh, 22 so our first contract will get completed somewhere in december 22 uh, and then uh, we'll have our self qualification okay and uh, do we get penalized for this extension or uh, i'm just no, trying no, to get no no it's not a, about penalty it is about additional revenue so uh, there is no uh, penalty in that okay okay and uh, regarding this ras uh, uh, so we have said that we have sold around 46 units in this uh, current financial year which was a full year of operation and we have right. a capacity of around 250 crores which we were planning to double in like coming to our years or so so how are we planning to capture the market because uh, it is only 46 which we have sold out of the capacity of 250 yes yeah, so this being first year of our uh, uh, venture uh, we are uh, i would say we are not very much satisfied but we are satisfied with the uh, numbers we have put in in first year uh, definitely in this year we are targeting more than 100 units uh, to be sold uh, for this cng boosters and uh, to achieve another uh, like numbers more than 200 uh, in next financial year but uh, it depends on how uh, and uh, what scale this uh, demand comes up uh, we are quite bullish on uh, getting new orders uh, considering the demand in uh, of the cng compressors in india so uh, we are quite bullish and working on it yes okay and our clientele for this ras is basically cgd companies uh, the downstream ones is it or largely yes okay and uh, okay so my uh, so on this investment side so i understand that major portion of your investment is for the liquid fund like you just clarified but what about the long term investment which we are seeing on the balance sheet long term investment largely are into our subsidiaries uh, so i think in the last uh, annual report it said some uh, some preference share to prabha energy so uh, that's not your subsidiary right yeah we have some investment in prabha but that are limited to that amount only it has not increased but what is that against for like how are you planning to uh, get it back or uh, in this financial year it will be uh, returned to uh, it will get back to deep industries okay okay fine yeah that's it from my side thank you thank you thank you participants wish to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touch tone telephone we have the, we have the next question from the line of levin shah from value quest investment advisors private limited please go ahead uh, yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity sir uh, sir on this uh, booster compressor so what i can uh, read from our presentation is that uh, the overall requirement is going to be around 23000 uh, units and we are talking of around uh, 100 units next year 200 units uh, the year after that so if you can explain uh, who are the other players over here because the opportunity seems to be quite large and our capacities are very small as compared to the opportunity see there are few players already predominantly in this market and i am sure looking to these uh, opportunities everyone would be trying to boost up their capacities but uh, the requirement uh, you know is going to be static it is going to be increasing as years pass by 
and uh, we are also trying to gear up first we want to achieve to what uh, our uh, install capacity is and uh, if the demand still persists we will try to ramp up the capacities but today if i have to uh, clearly say in the demand supply ratio the demand is much higher than what the supply is so there is a, a, a strong gap between the both and that is where we think that these opportunities for us would be uh, not only challenging but very uh, exciting so if you can name any players who are already there and uh, might have some uh, sizable capacity uh, i don't think from the domestic players there are companies uh, more or less to the capacities that what we are talking uh, there are one or two other companies who have uh, some base in china and uh, uh, maybe they have a uh, larger capacities to address this but we are following a complete model of make in india model and uh, we are confident that as time passes by we would be able to match the requirements okay okay sir and this uh, 250 our capacity is for 250 compressor right so what would be the peak revenue potential at this 250 uh, number on peak 250 uh, units we can expect uh, around 100 cr out of it okay okay sir and lastly uh, uh, so uh, have we started getting orders or is there a negotiation based orders that happened for this uh, booster compressors or is it a tender based ordering that uh, that is the way to go about for this compressors no negotiations are so indispensable so they normally happen at every uh, every tender that is been submitted negotiations do happen but uh, they get also avoided uh, with the kind of urgencies and uh, requirement the client has uh, so sorry sir actually i i didn't put uh, my question properly uh, so uh, what i want to what i wanted to understand is that are these orders based on one on one negotiations or is there a tendering process and if we are l1 then we get orders for this it is it is on the tendering process and once you are l1 only then you would be called for the negotiation okay got it uh, thank you sir uh, thanks a lot and all the best thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of akshay kothari from envision capital please go ahead yeah hi thanks for taking my question sir uh, i wanted to understand what percentage of our order book would be fixed price contracts so our uh, entire order book is a fixed price okay we do not have price escalation uh, during the continuance of contract okay okay got it and could you please elaborate something on the working capital cycle like uh, how is it going to look go forward and uh, any efficiency is likely to come in yeah so we are forcing some efficiency on uh, data is receivable uh, recoverable so there uh, as of now it is uh, appearing little high uh, which we are entailing uh, to get it below otherwise it would be in uh, almost similar range okay and regarding the uh, supply side uh, import so we we don't import anything from uh, any other country uh, it all all raw materials are domestically sourced no no, no. we are importing uh, uh, from us uh, largely and uh, there we have uh, no matlab uh, either uh, uh, lc or uh, cash payment terms yeah okay okay and uh, uh, i am not aware about this uh, integrated project management so can you please elaborate something regarding this uh, business uh, ipm yeah so integrated project management is a uh, contract wide uh, pool of services uh, under one roof uh, this services uh, includes drilling uh, hydro fracturing cementing mud logging and well completion jobs so uh, it's a uh, pool uh, which ensures uh, right from drilling to completion of well so if any producer is having uh, assets fields then they want to monetize that uh, this integrated project management ensures uh, all services put together in a single contract okay okay so uh, uh, just to given uh, what we can say uh, landscape so uh, in india which other companies are in ipm uh, if you can give that 
seen as of now uh, no indian companies is providing this services uh, of course uh, companies like schlumberger and halliburton they are providing this type of services okay 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 that would be great and on the compression side please correct if my understanding is wrong that uh, on the gas compression side uh, there are companies like kirloskar and all these so are we doing something different from them or uh, what is it no no so kirloskar is a company who are the manufacturers they are the packagers for the compressors okay. and what they do uh, is largely the compression and the assembling side of it what we do is we buy certain equipments on our gas compression uh, hiring business we buy few equipments from them largely we buy these such big size equipments from us and then we put it on uh, service base to our clients so okay. they are largely into supply they are largely into uh, the packaging of these compressor packages okay so they don't also they also don't manufacture it uh, compressors kirloskar See, normally uh, uh, these compressors are something that uh, no, uh, the companies in US are the ones who would be making this engines are something companies again in US would be doing this so kirloskar uh, uh, you know imports all these they try to package them along with the coolers and the skids and the packages and then they sell it to the customers maybe us or maybe to the client directly maybe okay so okay the limited role and we are more on the leasing model yeah we are on the we provide the services along with the equipment and manpower and we deliver our this to perform the gas compression that is required by the client okay 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 understood sir okay thanks a lot and okay yeah thanks thank you we have the next question from the line of reena shah from elara capital please go ahead hi sir thank you for the opportunity So I just wanted to briefly understand your uh, acquisition announcement of Thompson Offshore. Like, what could be the financial parameters? How? What would be the timeline of completion of this acquisition post until the approval? If you can give some light. See, uh, as I as we said, uh, we have received uh, approval from COC and letter of award from COC. Uh, okay. The process is under NCLT. and it okay. will take 6 uh, to 9 months that is what our estimate is uh, to get through um, the nclt process okay. and uh, once that nclt process completes we will have uh, entire control over that company and then we'll uh, start reviving it so it will take another 6 months to uh, start the business okay and sir what is the financial thing like the, on that um uh, management side and everything how what kind of uh, arrangement that is being planned so uh, i would uh, say that uh, as the time passes will uh, the moment will reaches to that nclt approval stage it would be then proper to uh, quantify the amount uh, but as of now uh, i can just say that it's a very good deal for us uh, and uh, we would be uh, getting much out of it okay 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 thank you yeah thank you participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone we have the next question from the line of priya harwani from perpetuity venture llp please go ahead hello yes we can hear you uh yeah so just one question from my side uh, like when we see the inflationary pressure on our operating cost so how much can we pass to our client yeah so as we said uh, in new contracts we can definitely pass that entire thing to our clients in new bids but uh, those contracts which are actually running uh, we have the, those limitations because we do not have any escalation clause in uh, running contracts okay. so our uh, contracts are fixed price contracts so there we have certain chance uh, in some of contracts we have range uh, for fuel escalation if that price breaches that range then client will mm -hmm. uh, reimburse that okay okay got it thank you yeah. thank you 
We have the next question from the line of Pratik Podar from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. What is the nature of this order book of 632 crore? These all are our uh, services contracts uh, of all services put together and uh, their execution is expected in 18 to 24 months. And this is over and above the existing ones, right? Which is already there in the base. So they are put together, which are already there, their balance uh, portion of work and the new contracts put together. So if I were to ask it, sorry, the other way, this has been unutilized, right? 632 crores of orders have not been, I mean, worked upon as of now. Correct. But so this could be from your existing... You to execute it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Siddharth from Zenith Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, just uh, one question on this uh, dolphin officer. Uh, Mr. Siddharth, you might want to come a little closer to the mic. Your voice is not very clear. Yeah. Whether dolphin also will result to incremental debt on the balance sheet? As of now, uh, uh, as per our plan, uh, I think uh, our internal accruals will take care of it. Uh, to a certain extent, we may go for debt, but as of now, uh, it's not yet finalized. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Piyush Mehta from Capri's Investments. Please go ahead. Hi. Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Good afternoon, Taj Bhai. Good afternoon, Rohan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, uh, first question would be on, uh, you know, we've mentioned the business segments and the various uh, revenue mix that we have uh, for the for FY22. How was it different? How FY21 was different from this, if I have to consider natural gas, uh, workover and drilling trade and IPM? What, what was the breakup then? Uh, uh, sorry, Piyush, different in a sense? Mm -hmm. So, say currently we are at say 35 to 40% comes from workover and drilling gig rigs in FY22. What was the percentage of the same in FY21? Yes, so more or less, uh, yes, there will be some up and down in between verticals. Uh, I would uh, say, uh, in uh, like in FY21, it would be. Uh, from rigs, it was around 33%. This time, it is somewhere around 35 plus percent. Uh, and compression, it was around 33%, which is continues to be 33, 34%. Uh, IPM, uh, so it depends. Uh, mix and match will happen. But it will be more or less in those broad broad ranges, yeah. So if I have to talk, look at it in FY24, you think uh, the mix will more or less remain the same? We'll try to uh, uh, put it in same uh, boxes because as a conscious strategy, we always believe that our services portfolio should be diversified in a way that all types of services should get similar weightage. But uh, that will be our uh, conscious attempt. Uh, but if that doesn't mean that if I am getting some more orders in particular segment, I'll uh, not take that. Right, because say if KOC alone, you mentioned that you know it could be something. If uh, you know we get, it could be huge. And if that right. comes up, and plus, say Dolphin is uh, completely up and running in FY24, so both these would go in the oil and gas division. And uh, in that case, I think for Dolphin, we'll have to create one more uh, segment itself because it would then more into offshore. So it will add one more vertical then. Okay. Okay, so uh, if, can I assume that uh, because Dolphin say you mentioned that at peak it was about 400 crores at 30 percent margins in FY24 we could do at least half of that from Dolphin alone. Half of that uh, is uh, a quite a, a bullish assumption, uh, but yes, uh, we'll definitely try to get as much as we can. Yeah. 
so when we say we've acquired dolphin we acquired all the assets and when we start uh, you know uh, going for new orders on the mm-hmm. uh, offshore side uh, don't we have to requalify again for all these contracts because this has been a defunct company and been some while that it is operating all employees would have uh, gone away and and we'll be starting to build it from scratch so do we have to requalify for new orders so qualification is basically based on the kind of experience and the contracts that have been executed so with that perspective we will definitely qualify technically as far as the equipment is concerned that will depend on the condition of the equipment that we would be having within the company or there would be a possible chance that looking to the demand in the oil and gas space we may also go ahead for buying new um, uh, offshore equipment to bid for those tenders the qualification probably could won't be an any issue okay okay and uh, you know when someone asked a question in terms of the segmental break up of the order book so it was almost similar to the revenue break up so was the understanding correct almost yes okay and the current 600 crores order book so say we mentioned that you know over the next year we could get 500 crore plus of orders so from the present one what is what are the order what has been the order books which has been added over the past year past two years number, i am not having it uh, but the recent uh, orders which have been added in this is around 154 uh, types full year number i can uh, check and let you know okay i'm just trying to see what has been the order book growth this is a concurrent uh, you know we get keep getting the orders on a concurrent Ladies and gentlemen, please hold the line. We have a drop in the management connection. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management reconnected. So you may go ahead. Audible? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, so, Pars Bhai, uh, from the order book, uh, which is a 600 crore order book, uh, what would be the average margin profile of this order book, which we'll be executing over the next 18 to 24 months? So normally, our uh, margins are in the level of uh, between, as I had mentioned, 35 to 40 percent is the gross uh, range. uh and you know it would be uh, by and large in these ranges only okay so considering we add another 500 crores of orders is it fair to assume that we could in two years time we could have close to 1000 crores of revenue a 10 billion revenue target so yes like uh, discussed in past also uh, 
our margins are uh, quite good in com in terms of gas processing contracts they are good in rigs but in comparison they are little less so overall uh, when we talk about overall company level margins we are uh, able to maintain in range of around 40% and uh, the new order book which we are expecting uh, we believe it would be in same mix uh, and so uh, it is good to assume that we'll maintain those margins okay so what i was trying to ask is the current order book plus uh, expecting another uh, uh, you know 500 crores could be see a 1000 crore plus revenue in by end of 2024 sorry 3000 So saying is, we have a current order book of 600 crores. We are expecting another 500 crores in the coming year. Uh, right. So standing at FY24, X Dolphin could we see a thousand crore plus revenue for the company? Order book, yes. No order book, no. yes. Not the revenue. Revenue, revenue. Okay. Right. So order book. Uh, generally, that order book spreads over uh, 18-24 uh, months. So order book uh, doesn't mean it will be revenue for that particular year. You know. So by the time we get an order, new order uh, to those ranges, by that time we would have finished some orders that we are yet to execute. So all that right. put together would give a visibility of the order book in next 18 to 24 months, and in certain contracts we have around three years contract as well. So, so uh, assuming the growth on a very conservative side, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, it could be possibly in the ranges of 15% year on year. Okay, and when we say uh, when we say we expect say 500 crore plus orders in the next year, does that include any order from KOC as well? From KOC. We have not factored. We have not factored the because that is something that we are not sure of what orders we are going to get. We have also not factored the revenue that could probably come from Dolphin. But uh, this the 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 15% growth that we are talking is purely on our ongoing businesses that we are uh, running in deep industries. Okay. Anything that is to come up from Dolphin or KOC would be uh, something that would be added in addition to what we are doing. Understood. Understood. And last question: You mentioned there has been a delay, delay in terms of the IPM first IPM contract that we are executing. Uh, what was the reason for this delay? Hey, that was not actually. That was not, there are two reasons. One delay was because of the uh, you know monsoons. So monsoons in the area where we operate, they are uh, extreme. So in a year it happens so that about uh, three to four months is the period where we have to literally stop the operation. and okay. the second is there was an increase in work in the quantum of work that was given to us so the work that got extended was uh, because of the extension of the work that we got so okay that is the reason we we, we are now to work until, until december 22 okay okay and sorry one last question in terms of roe uh, we mentioned that you know excluding goodwill um, we are at 10% what is the goodwill on the balance sheet and uh, why are we not writing it off so uh, goodwill uh, on balance sheet is around 380 uh, or something uh, which has been uh, derived over a process of de merger and uh, as per india's guidelines we are testing that uh, goodwill for impairment every year if impairment is required as per impairment testing will uh, go and impair it otherwise it will remain as it is okay so do we have a roe target say over the next within the company to have a certain roe over the next 2 to 3 years uh frankly we have not calculated or uh, calculated in that perspective yeah okay okay thanks a lot thank you thank you for your time thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of suman galgupalai from rare enterprises please go ahead I my questions are related. Ah, uh, Mr. Suman, we are unable to hear you very clearly. Could you come closer to the mic, please? Yeah, can you hear me now? Uh, it's much better. Okay, my questions are related to workover and drilling rigs. So, what kind of uh, rig rate hikes have we uh, been able to capture uh, separately for workover and the thousand horsepower rigs? So we have been able to. Um, Uh, capture around 10 to 12 percent of the hike of the rates uh, that we were previously working on, and there are few tenders which are already under evaluation. So, uh, there, but I won't be able to quantify exactly what kind of an hike we would be getting. 
but during these times we expect that the hikes could be anywhere in the ranges of 10 to 15% uh, as a standard rise okay uh, and just to clarify what would be the share of psu clients for our uh, workover drilling rigs uh, it could be in the ranges of around uh, 65 odd percent that would go with the psu and the balance would go with the private clients okay and could you uh, just explain the competitive structure in terms of demand supply scenario in this uh, particular segment. See, uh, the work over business is something that is an ongoing business, uh, but currently looking to the crude oil markets, both these uh, segments on the work over and drilling are doing fantastic. Uh, so all the oil companies, the PSUs and everybody is keen to produce as much of oil they can. Uh, so that is definitely holding a more pressure uh, or more demand on the side of a work over. Uh, on the drilling, equally we are seeing that a lot of uh, new requirements are coming up uh, from all the sides of the clients. So we feel that these requirements are growing uh, enormously and there is a huge demand in both these sectors. Okay. Uh, and the supply situation? Uh capacity wise sorry i didn't get your question i am asking about the supply situation to cater to the demand you spoke about uh -huh. what is that situation like on the ground so, so there so there has been definitely a pressure on the supply side as well but we are confident that getting this supplies is not going to be that difficult barring uh, you know delays it for few months but uh, I feel on a, on a larger side, uh, I, I, I hope you are asking the supply on the equipment side or you are asking the supply on the services side? I am asking for the uh, supply of uh, drilling services uh, to cater to the demand from the PSU company. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely we are geared up. So whatever if the demand has to go up, we are completely geared to provide because we have systems in place, we have the entire infrastructure in place. So adding few more rigs won't be an issue with us. Okay. And uh, could you mention the uh, EBITDA margins for this segment? Uh, what kind of EBITDA margins do we make? So on vertical wise, uh, we generally uh, take this uh, as a company as a whole. Uh, vertical wise EBITDA, I would say it are these are little less than uh, we are getting in gas processing. Yeah. Okay. And la final question is for this particular segment, what is the outlook going forward? What kind of numbers uh, are you projecting for this segment? So yeah, work over drilling, uh, as Mr. Saula said, we are, uh, so we are not projecting uh, on the segment size, but on the largely, as I mentioned, the broad range would be in the ranges of 15%. And that I'm just trying to be very conservative. Uh, while I mentioned uh, some time back, uh, we have not factored the new requirement or the new uh, tenders that we possibly could win from KOC and all. But uh, this is keeping in mind the ongoing fleets and the local or domestic demand that comes up would, would uh, range anywhere between 15%, uh, I mean around 15%. Okay. All right, that was it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Niharika Jain from Equitas Investment Consultancy. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, on this Dolphin offshore side, are we procuring only the assets or the company as a whole? They are getting company as a whole. Uh, okay. All right. And on the margin side, you said that uh, in general we have a margin of 40 to 45 percent on compression, dehydration, and all of that. What about IPM? What kind of margins do we generally? for IPM? IPM are uh, margins are around 25 to 27 percent. Okay, so this is lesser than the uh, compression services? Yeah, these are lesser than all other services. Okay, and uh, regarding the KOC, so I understand that once uh, once you get a new tender, so you will uh, procure new rigs, right? Correct. Uh, so how much time does it take for you to get new rigs and uh, kind of set it up and seeing the supply constraints all around? So is it affecting you? 
no so uh, generally we get time uh, six to nine months to deploy uh, any new rig and uh, we are comfortable getting new equipment in hello hello yes we can hear you am i audible uh, yes ma'am you are audible yeah. Yeah. So uh, we procure rigs majorly from US, or where is it from? Like domestically, or only US? This is the operator. Can the management hear us? It appears there may be a drop in the line of the management. Give us a moment. We'll reconnect the management. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management connected back again. So you may go ahead. Uh, hello, Niharika. Uh, so we were talking about rigs. So where do you procure your rigs from? Is it from US or are we even procuring it domestically? We buy all the rigs uh, from China. Okay. So, uh, but uh, as you all know that China, the shipment situation is really bad. So do you see any um, constraint for you uh, in like current scenario? See the China. The, there are uh, definitely constraints as far as the logistics go. Uh, yeah. uh, there has been a pressure on the timings uh, and the cost on the logistics front. Yeah. But uh, we have been constantly putting lots of spares and every everything from China. So we don't see a major issue coming in on that side, barring little issues of the logistics that are already prevalent in across the globe. Okay. Okay. All right. And. Uh, so when we say raw material consumption in in our standalone uh, PNL, so what all constitutes in it? Like what do we mean by raw material consumption? Seeing the services, because I see power and fuel, you club in uh, other expenses, and even repairs are clubbed in other expenses. So when I say raw material consumption in standalone, so what exactly constitutes the, that expense? Uh, in our case, it's a cost of uh, operation. Like uh, it includes spares. Uh, fuel, uh, lubricants, uh, coolants, and all. Uh, so it is more or less uh, that, and some services which we need to take from other service providers like transportation, crane services, and all. Okay, okay, okay. All right, got it. Okay, yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Piyush Mehta from Capri's Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, Parul Bhai. Uh, just one question on the order book again. Uh, so we have the current order book. If I have to, you mentioned that we are on a fixed uh, contract basis. Uh, the entire order is on a fixed price basis. And within this order book, what part of the order book would be in terms of the fuel, which is, as you said, has impacted our margins? What percentage of the order book would be on, you know, much lower fuel prices, and what could be the new escalation, escalated levels? So uh, we have not calculated the order book uh, to the impact of the fuel or the price escalation that we'd be having, 
बट अगेन एज अस्टिमेट वी कैन जस्ट अज्यूम दो काइंड ऑफ एस्केलेशन सर्विस इज टू बी क्लोजली टू अराउंड ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ सो ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट डोंट हैव द एंटायर रिग्स हैविंग द एस्केलेशन ऑन और द प्रेशर दैट वी हैव ऑन द इन्फ्लेशन बट देर आर एज आई मैंशन देर आर ओनली फ्यू रिग्स वी शू हैव द इम्पैक्ट ऑन द एस्केलेशन सो यू यू कैन सी अबाउट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द rig business uh, would be having certain amount of pressure so if from 600 crores we have 35% coming from the rig business within that you're saying 25% is an order book which is subjected to inflation risk rest of the order book is more or less stable correct correct okay understood thank you so much thank you that was the last question i now hand it over to the management for closing comments thank you everyone uh, for participation in our uh, invest uh, investor call for quarter and year ended on uh, 31st march 22 if you have any questions you can approach us or go india advisor uh, any time will be available to answer your questions thank you thank you very much on behalf of go india go india advisors that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines